You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Soul Stream Talk with your host, Rebecca Ann. Your new resource for soul path, past life, energy healing, and astrological information and guidance. Rebecca Ann is here to help you move into greater clarity and self empowerment by offering direct on air guidance. So now, welcome the host of Soul Stream Talk, Rebecca Ann. Welcome, everyone. I'm Rebecca Ann, your host, and you are listening to Soul Stream Talk. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And this is a new kind of program for a new era in human consciousness and your new resource for all things mind, body, soul, and spirit. And today is all about sacred living. And if you think of rich, warm, meaningful, rewarding, joyful, soulful feelings, these are just some of the characteristics of sacred living. Not to mention feeling content with a deep sense of peace. I mean, who wouldn't want more of that? But how to get there from hour to hour uh, throughout any given day that's what can really be a challenge for just about everyone. And setting aside regular time for sacred ceremonies or worship in a church or a temple, or even if it's around a bonfire or a vortex, this is an ancient and really well-established human tradition. Um, now that so many more people are identifying as spiritual rather than religious, uh, new and full moon ceremonies and ecstatic dance, sweat lodges, spiritual workshops and classes, or practices like Tai Chi, yoga, and Qigong, along with retreats, are becoming a lot more common for a, a combination of worship and making spiritual connection with the divine and with other people. But some of the people who love the idea of trying a new spiritual activity uh, can feel really intimidated, like it'll require changing your whole life, maybe eating everything differently, how you spend your spare time has to change, and you aren't really up for a wholesale reboot of your entire life in a very different way. And other people hesitate because they don't see any way they can come up with the hours of extra time they don't have to undertake new practices. And lots of old souls, and old souls are those of us who have had many, many lives. Our souls have reincarnated through many centuries. Uh, a lot of old souls who are going through intense awakenings right now uh, definitely believe it requires hours of devotion every week or even every day to live more spiritually or to grow uh, and develop their consciousness. And it's important to understand that this is actually a hangover from former lives where that was 
absolutely true. And through most of human history, life was much more labor intensive. You know, travel was by a cart with a horse or a donkey or an ox, maybe a camel. Uh, You had to make soap. You had to, like, maybe grind your own flour as well as cook from scratch. You had to make a fire. Um, You sewed your own clothes. Maybe you traded. You had to scale fish before cooking, catch and scale fish before cooking them. So with life that intensive uh, from a labor point of view and demanding, you really had to either choose a family life where you would be able to participate in all those activities, or you could choose a life of spiritual devotion, which meant you were much more cloistered or secluded, but you weren't taking on responsibilities you couldn't live up to of being in a family. But today, that doesn't work so well, Uh, even for people who are today able to schedule regular time for spiritual pursuits and pleasures are still likely to get really frazzled and disconnected while running around from school or work or both to doing basic errands and chores, keeping up a home, and for some people also raising children. If you add commuting to the mix, and whether that involves catching trains and buses or you know, crawling along bumper to bumper at uh, you know, going five miles an hour on a 40 or 60 mile per hour road, uh, there are few things that are more soul sapping than commuting and running around from place to place. So it may not matter how wonderful your Tai Chi class or moon ceremony was two or three days ago once you're in the middle of a daily routine. And uh, today's goal, therefore, is offering ways you can make life feel more sacred hour to hour as you're living it even if you often feel you have absolutely no time to make that happen or that you won't have enough time to make it count somehow. And uh, figuring out how to have more sacred day-to-day, hour-to-hour life really grows out of two simple steps. One has to do with creating the environment around you uh, in a way that reminds you of or creates the mindfulness that goes with the more sacred consciousness in the moment. And the other has to do with what I like to call the pause concept and going to go into details around that in a minute. Um, Personally, I have struggled with this, and I work for myself as an Akashic Records consultant, an energy healer, and an astrologer. That's my day job. And over the years, I have worked with thousands of people on clearing their energy and blocks, gaining clarity about soul purpose going forward, and helping them to get inspired and get strategies for creating more of the kind of life they really want. Um, But before I fully launched my practice a number of years ago, I had about a 12-year period where I was traveling all over the metro area where I lived, which was Washington, D.C. metro area, and also all around the U.S., Uh, for all kinds of study, training, and learning practices because I wanted to become the best practitioner that I could be. And I did spend an eight-year period as a part of my development where I meditated for two to three hours almost every single day. Day. Plus, I had additional time that I'd practice energy exercises and healings and giving readings. But, and this is important, just because 
I was doing all that didn't mean I was experiencing my life as sacred hour to hour. I am Rebecca Ann. This is Soul Stream Talk. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And when we come back, we're going to count deeply into all the different ways that you can make life more precious and sacred, no matter how much spiritual time you have now or not. So stay tuned. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back to you, to Soul Stream Talk. I am Rebecca Ann, your host on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is a new kind of program for a new era in human consciousness, and we air every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Channel 100. If you go to boldbravemedia.com, you can access archived shows as well as listen to the live show every Tuesday. Before the break, I had talked about how I spent an extended period of time working to become a practitioner of metaphysical services and um, how I was spending hours a day meditating and doing all kinds of other activities. And uh, nonetheless, just because I was able to devote all that time to development, it did not mean that I was always operating from a place of bliss and higher self. Like a lot of old souls, I felt a great longing and desire to help other people, to be of service in that way, I also felt an incredible sense of pressure to be perfect at what I did. And as many of you may well know, being perfectionistic is accompanied generally by self-judgment. So there can be a great sense of pressure, and for me there certainly was, as I was going through all these trainings, to be as good as possible, or really the truth was at the deep soul level, I wanted to be good enough to offer these things to people. In my mind, I'm thinking, I want to be so good And it wasn't like an ego, oh, I'm the very best. It was just I felt like it was almost too good to be true that I might get to help people in this way I so deeply wanted to. 
I had uh, had tough experiences, both in past lives and in my early life, this life, that made me far from egotistical, more uh, low in confidence and not so sure of myself. So in order to try to be good enough to offer services, I kind of imagined I had to be so far beyond other people and so far beyond how I felt inside myself to offer a metaphysical career that uh, I, I was under a lot of pressure. And I'd also, in addition, another kind of pressure was I'd left a stable career, was paid vacations and health insurance uh, in order to become a professional healer and reader. And so the whole thing seemed pretty up in the air, pretty chancy, no guarantees I'd even be able to make a living, uh, despite my huge investment of time and money. So I, though I had no doubt this new path to work spiritually with people and help them on their path, I had no doubt this was a deep calling for me. But even with all the activities and development and de- dedication, I was under incredible pressure. And it didn't really matter whether I'd put myself under that pressure or, or an external force had. The pressure was the same. I was married at the time, which definitely helped in terms of some moral support and not to mention paying the bills. But I remember so clearly one day coming out of a two and a half hour meditation and sort of out of body journey into beautiful sacred places with spirit guides and teachers working with them uh, for more information on that kind of journeying and out of body experience. You can go to shows 9, 10 and 11 uh, about spirit guides, angels and other helpers. One show, another show, Soul Travel and Astral Projection, and another show all about meditation. Those are shows 9, 10, and 11 you can access in the archives. So anyway, I came out of this amazing two-and-a-half-hour meditation, and my then-husband said something that triggered me the wrong way, and I, I just blasted him, you know, yelled or reacted, you know, sort of like a, a reactive cat. And then I, of course, immediately felt embarrassed and terrible. It was like, how could I go from sacred heights to such an extreme negative emotional reaction so fast? And, you know, wasn't I more spiritual than that with all the work I was doing? But the answer I eventually figured out has two parts. And the reason I tell this story is because I think that this is the perfect example of how many of us think and how we look at ourselves and our activities that can actually keep us from pursuing and developing uh, spiritually in ways that we'd like to and having a more sacred life. So the two things I figured out after this blasting my husband as I came out of an amazing meditation, that one, devotion and spiritual development don't relieve, didn't relieve me and don't relieve any person of being a completely fallible and imperfect human being. That's who we are. We are human no matter how enlightened we become. And while we may revere, you know, the Dalai Lama or Jesus or follow the Buddha, for example, uh, we are not avatars or saints. And as humans, we uh, still remain human with all the human foibles and uh, pitfalls even as we're becoming more and more connected and awakened spiritually. And the second thing I learned from that experience I had was that just because I or anyone 
uh, sets apart special time for sacred pursuits and studies. It doesn't automatically change how we think, feel, and act when we return to everyday, ordinary human consciousness. I am Rebecca Ann. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and you're listening to Soul Stream Talk. And right now we're going to slip in a little break, but when we come back, I'm going to let you know a whole series of ways in which you can work with yourself to become more sacred in how you live moment to moment. So you won't want to miss that. We'll be right back. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Col des Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Ouvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ouvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back to you on the BBM Global Network. You're listening to Soul Stream Talk with me, Rebecca Ann. And this is a new kind of program for a new era in human consciousness. We air every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Channel 100. And you can also go to boldbravemedia.com, click on my time slot and banner for Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern, and go through, scroll through to access a number of other programs. Uh, all the pro- all these programs are ways that you can understand and adopt practices that may help you go forward in your life at spiritual, mental, emotional levels. And today is all about sacred living and how to live more sacredly at the break. Uh, or rather before the break, I offered information about finding that even when I was spending hours and hours a day in devoted spiritual development and practice and soul awareness, I would slide or, or sort of slam is a better adjective, slam back into everyday human consciousness and could still have an emotional freak out and that really embarrassed me coming right out of a great meditation. So that was because no matter how many hours a day we may set apart as special time for our sacred pursuits, that those activities don't automatically change how we think, feel, and act when we return to everyday, ordinary human consciousness, uh, which is imperfect and fallible. And devotion and spiritual development 
man, don't relieve us of being imperfect humans, as a matter of fact. So, what are we dealing with? In fact, changing our everyday consciousness and thereby living in a more sacred manner takes a plan, and it's a plan or an intent and plan that has to be implemented. And guess what? It has to be implemented in moments as we're going through our day, even when we're rushing to the train or, uh, you know, trying to meet a deadline at work or going to pick up the kids or having to run a bunch of errands, you know, shopping and dry cleaning and go to the bank, all those kinds of things. Uh, So it's in that time, that ordinary everyday time, where we all tend to be in the most ordinary of human reaction and consciousness In those moments is where we have to interrupt ourselves and implement new forms of behavior, thinking, feeling, and reacting until we've come up with and established new habit patterns. So we, we have a plan and an intention We interrupt ourselves in the moment throughout our day again and again and again. And we just shift into a new way of thinking, feeling, and reacting for a moment. And because these new reactions are things that we're choosing rather than going on our default settings that we grew up with, um, we can ensure that they're sacred, uh, that they will be desirable, that they will be reflective of our wanting to have a new experience in life that we can call a more sacred way of life. So really, down to brass tacks, choosing to create and develop new habits of thought, feeling, and reaction is what sacred living is all about. And of course, it can be enhanced by time we may set aside for ceremony or worship, but Ceremony, worship, meditation, uh, those kinds of activities don't automatically change how we go through our day to day. And in order to develop a sacred life or a more sacred life, there are basically two steps that I found to be invaluable for and uh, critical to making that work. The first step is based around the concept of pausing and interrupting myself or your pausing and interrupting yourself. And this works equally well whether you're highly experienced in different kinds of uh, metaphysical pursuits or regular spiritual practices, or if you're just starting your entire new type of life where you want to be more awakened and you want to answer the spiritual calling or the soul calling you feel deep within. Even if you're just starting out and the first thing you ever do is use the techniques that I'm talking about here, um, that will help you develop a new way of living and a more sacred way of living. And rather than thinking, oh, I have to do these more advanced things and change my life in so many ways, and I don't know if I can do that, so I'm not even going to bother, the techniques here of pausing and, uh, and learning to interrupt yourself is going to take you to a new sacred place. 
all by itself. So I am Rebecca Ann. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and you are listening to Soul Stream Talk. It's time to slip in another little break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to go really in depth with uh, how to interrupt yourself and pause and create that more sacred life you may be longing for. So stay tuned. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Welcome back to you. This is Soul Stream Talk, and we come to you live from the BBM Global Network and tune in radio every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. I am your host, Rebecca Ann, and to access archived programs, just go to bullbravemedia.com, click on my banner for 2 p.m. Eastern Tuesdays, scroll down, and there's a whole trove of shows that you can access and listen to uh, as podcasts, basically, uh, if you like what you're hearing, and uh Today, we are talking about sacred living and how to make your own life more sacred. If you have a question or a comment and you'd like to call in, the number is 866-451-1451. That's 866-451-1451. I'd be happy to hear from you. So before the break, I was going into how creating a more sacred life takes a conscious choice and the intention to do that, along with having a plan of action for how to change how you are in your hour to hour, actually minute to minute, everyday routine. And this includes whether you're you know, in line at the grocery store or going to pick up some dry cleaning or some kids or uh, having to clean around the house or working or in, being in school or all of the above. Uh, we all have a lot of obligations that tend to not feel particularly sacred. Uh, however, the techniques of pausing and with self-interruption, as well as creating more of an environment that reminds you of and brings you back to, oh, wait, I'm trying to create a more sacred life. And 
you can have all kinds of little reminders around you in your environment that will help you to feel that richness and warmth and connectedness, like shift more into higher self-consciousness, even while you're commuting or while you're in the middle of of, uh, boring but necessary chores. And so first the concept of pausing and interrupting yourself. I'm going to elaborate on this in that to say that even if you are a person who has absolutely no spare time, or at least that you think of it that way, or even just a tiny bit of spare time, you can always pause for a few seconds and take a few breaths and shift your consciousness. It takes intention, it takes some technique, and uh, we're going to go into a number of techniques that you can use, but the other part of having a day-to-day-to-day sacred life or experience of a more sacred way of living in your day-to-day is to set up your environment in ways that reinforce your sense of who you are and who you are becoming and who you want to be. Um, I always keep, uh, I have some little animal uh, statues, a bear and a wolf and a cat that I keep on a side table near my desk and I have a beautiful uh, quartz crystal in the center of them as well as a rock that I gather during a shamanic uh, practice weekend I attended to learn some shamanic techniques and we went out and gathered a rock to work with so I have that little rock and a quartz crystal which I really resonate with and a couple of my animal totems in statue form at a side table and if my eye just passes by there I am reminded oh other consciousness for you it might be photographs or uh, artwork Uh, You could have, you know, a statue of the Buddha or a picture of Jesus or a picture of Sai Baba or the Dalai Lama. Uh, You can have any number of kinds of crystals or rocks. You can have uh, one of those wonderful salt lamps uh, that you can have one that just is steady state. You plug it in or turn it on and it glows, but they also make ones that shift in color as they're on. Uh, I also, for example, have a beautiful, it's just a postcard, but it has a beautiful picture of Isis, the goddess Isis on it, uh, with her wings spread and a beautiful inspiring background. These are just examples of My eye goes in this direction and I see this thing. My eye goes in that direction. I see another thing. You can have phrases or affirmations that you like. You could even just have swatches of intense color you make with a painting kit that speak to your soul and lift your spirits. Uh, So having something, a crystal hanging in the window that makes rainbows all over your room or even better in your car if you have a car Uh, because being on the road can be pretty uh, (laughs) pretty non-sacred feeling but having rainbows in your car and a little picture of of something beautiful um, or pictures of mountains or animals of any kind or artwork of a country that speaks to you, creating your environment like this, having scents like a diffuser with essential oils or maybe a, an essential oil spray 
or also you could wave smudge around in your car, your uh, office or place where you are. All of these things create an environment that gives you a reminder of and a breath of sacred living. I am Rebecca Ann. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and you are listening to Soul Stream Talk. And we have to slip in another little break. But when we come back, I'm going to tell you some things you might not know about how to pause and go into a more sacred mindset in the moment. So you won't want to miss that, and stay tuned. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Soul Stream Talk on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And I am your host, Rebecca Ann. We air every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And you can call in with a question or comment at 866 451 1451. That's 866 451 1451. Five one. You can also access archived shows uh, by going to boldbravemedia.com, clicking on my banner, and scrolling down to the bottom. And today's show is all about sacred living, how you can create a more sacred experience in your day-to-day, hour-to-hour life. And before the break, I talked about setting up your environment. Uh, This could be everything from crystals or statues on your desk or in jewelry or even just hidden in your pocket so you feel them, Uh, smudging your area of work or car or home, uh, diffusing essential oils or finding ones that are made so you can spray them to clear space and give you an aromatherapeutic uplift. You can also have photos and art, screen savers that uh, speak to you. And one of the most important things to think about in terms of environment and spiritual experience or sacred experience is connecting with nature. And whether you live in a big city or a rural area, uh, getting out into green and uh, where you can stand on the dirt and where you can see vistas of more green and feel the rhythm of nature, hearing birds, uh, looking at water, maybe wading in water or boating on water, 
um, connecting with and getting out in nature uh, is something that rejuvenates the soul. Absolutely. That's why so many people will choose like a beach vacation or alternatively a mountain vacation, an environment that uh, really gives them a chance to have a rich experience and just relax deeply uh, in a way that most of us don't always get to in the day to day. So this brings me to the first technique you can use for creating a sacred experience in your pause. Now, if you think you're not going to, like pausing is a concept of just stopping for a minute, interrupting your state of mind with a bit of greater awareness and taking a couple deep breaths and then even in just a five second or 10 second period, introducing something that helps you uplift yourself and go into more soul consciousness than ordinary waking consciousness. So if you don't think you're going to remember to pause, you can always set your alarm or timer on your phone. Most of us carry phones around that'll do that for us with pretty chimes or something. You can even put it on vibrate. So if you're at work, you'll just feel it. But the first technique is something I like to call remembering and presencing or to remember and presence. So Go back through time, whether it's the lake you spent time at as a kid or the friend you visited in the mountains or that vacation you went on, to, uh, you know, in Italy or South America where you had a really rich, rejuvenating experience. Remember a time and place in your life when you were really inspired. It could also be when you had a new child <clears throat> or uh, when you met someone you loved or when you got a new pet, a cat or dog or whatever, <clears throat> little bird maybe. So remembering that joy and that heightened place and then fully bringing it into your visceral physical experience so you remember it's not just a mental it's like oh i'm remembering and presencing or bringing into my present the feeling from that that is a pretty instant way the whole thing can take 10 seconds but it's a pretty instant way to go into a more sacred experience of the moment Another second technique you can use for this is I think of it as relaxing into total peace. And it has an element of remembering involved if that's what works for you. Uh, some people are really good at just going <sighs> like you breathe in and then you exhale in a burst. <clears throat> And everything relaxes. Or you can remember something beautifully relaxing from your past. And just all of your body going into a total state of relaxation while you're standing in the grocery line. Or while you're sitting in your car or on a train. Or while you're in the middle of doing chores around the house. But you pause and go into that experience and then you resume whatever you are doing. So that's relaxing into total peace. Another technique you can use is to call upon your higher self and call that in. And if you have any feeling at all that you have a higher self or that you have angels or guides who work with you, when you do your pause and take a couple breaths, you simply Enlist either your higher self or those angels and guides or both to please fill you with light and love now. And then you feel it spread through you and you resume whatever you were doing. Yet another thing that you can do is what I like to think of as a one minute meditation. 
where you simply close your eyes and connect to the highest experience you've ever had. And then breathe a few times and come back out of it. And these are all techniques that will help you have a more sacred experience of daily life. And they are also wonderful ways that you can repeat and repeat and repeat. So you end up having hours of sacred experience throughout each day. I am Rebecca Ann, your host on Soul Stream Talk. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and it's time for another little break. When we come back, it's going to be time for the astrological feature of the week. So stay tuned. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Welcome back, everyone, to Soul Stream Talk. We're here on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Rebecca Ann. This is a new kind of program for a new era in human consciousness. And we air every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And if you go to boldbravemedia.com, you can access archived shows by clicking on my banner on the site. Now it's time for our astrological feature of the week. And Mars, the planet of action and assertion and initiation and adventuring, has been in the sign of Gemini since March 31st. But tonight... And in Gemini, it's all about communication and activity and making connections and connecting people and connecting with people and socially. But tonight at 11, 10 p.m. Eastern time, Mars will leave Gemini and go into the sign of Cancer. Now, Cancer is all about security memories, our sense of personal emotional security, our memories, our past experiences and sensations. And uh, as such, it's way more about our personal home life as compared to Gemini, which is about being out in the world and connecting a lot more. So having Mars here means that directing our energy consciously to issues of home and well-being and what helps us feel secure and uh, feeling our deep emotions and letting them cycle through us rather than stuffing them uh, are all ways to work with Mars in Cancer. And something that will likely come up as a result of this, has to do with something we discussed uh, a few weeks back, which is when Pluto went retrograde in Capricorn and Saturn, uh, that was on April 24th, Saturn retrograde on Capricorn on April 29th, and both were right within degrees of or conjunct the south node of your chart. Now, the south node in a chart, and a 
astrology chart is all about what we incarnated with our past life experiences, our past life mastery, our past life fears or phobias or things we have came in to visit anew and heal or learn from or learn about. And with Mars moving into Cancer now, um, we're mu- uh, and both Saturn and Pluto are so slow moving, they are still both conjunct. Uh, Saturn's exactly conjunct and Pluto's within three degrees of the south node. And this is likely to bring up a lot more, like don't be surprised if events in your life trigger your wounds, shadow parts of your personal history or things uh, popping up from past life. Uh, complexes and pain Um, and these are very likely trauma and wounds of various kinds uh, past and more recent past are likely to get triggered with uh, Mars and Cancer in a way that even if they didn't come forward back when um, those two planets were going retrograde with Cancer's heightened emotional state and more emphasis on uh, either securing personal personal sense of security or having no feeling of personal security, feeling much more vulnerable. These things are likely to come up more with uh, Mars and Cancer, where it will be for the next two months. So something for you to work with as you also go forward to help create a more sacred way of life. You are listening to Soul Stream Talk. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I am your host, Rebecca Ann, and that's all for this week. Please tune in next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern for more Soul Stream Talk. Thanks for listening. This has been Soul Stream Talk with your host, Rebecca Ann. Join us each week as Rebecca answers your questions about the issues, difficulties, and challenges you face, as well as all things spiritual and intuitive, here on Soul Stream Talk. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.